Well, good afternoon, or is it still good We're morning? We're just going to wait until there's a few more people on, I reckon. We've literally just gone live for the first time in a long time. So <laughs> no, no, join us time. for a walk around classic car auctions here at the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show at the NEC. Uh, there's loads of Land Rovers in the auction today, so we're going to do a little tour and show you all of them, hopefully. So we've got, uh, I think we've got one person joining us already. Um, so fire away with any questions as we go yes, around. We, we're going to, we've got access to them. We can get in them. We've got 34 uh, Land Rovers to look around, yes. of which 17, 18 of them are, are Range Rovers. Yeah, from the same collection, I believe. They are indeed, and uh, some of them are projects, and we all know. Our audience love a project, as do you, Martin. Oh, yeah, too many in some cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my so, case. Um, when we've got a few more people, we'll have a little look around. Um, first, we'll kick off with a Range Rover, but then we'll, we've yes. got Defenders a, to go and have a look at. A lovely selection of Defenders here for us to poke around. I've very only, different as well, all very uh, different. And I've only spotted one or two I would want to take home. I don't know about uh, yourself. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? With this auction, there's something for everyone from like you say, project material right all the way up to turnkey, drive it home and uh, enjoy. But that's, it's lovely to be at an auction. Who doesn't love an auction? I mean, if anyone wants to uh, have a look at the catalogue, they can either come to the show and, um, and or register online. So you've got access to this catalogue online. We can yes. have a look at all of the lots. Obviously, there's a, an eclectic mix of other classic cars to choose from as well. The uh, catalogue is actually, I've put the link in the last post on Facebook and Instagram. So uh, feel free to click on that and have a look through what's available. I have a read up and uh, have a look at the prices. I think uh, we've questioned some of the guide prices. Um, some of them, I think, are optimistic. Some are very realistic. Yes. Um, there might again, be bargains yeah, to be had, potentially. I think there are. I think there will be. And I think, actually, there's only... It only takes two people, doesn't it, to make an auction really successful. Two people that want the vehicle. Yeah. Um, and we've all seen over the years prices go for some of them, you know, kind of like colossal amounts compared to what you think it's going to be worth. And other things don't quite meet what it should be. But yeah. uh, we'll see. It's worth we? what someone's prepared to pay on the day. Um, so is it 12 o'clock? Okay. Four minutes. So we'll just allow some people to join us. Anyone that uh, is joining us now, we're live at the NEC Classic Car Show, Classic Car and Restoration Show. Um, we love a restoration, don't we? Yes, and it's not just the auction here either. There's uh, plenty of Land Rover clubs here that you can look around. Project J are here, Series 2 Club. So uh, if you do fancy popping down, you can have a, little, have a little go at the auction, but also don't miss out on any of the uh, exhibitors either because it's a brilliant show. So if you are heading down to the show, you can obviously you have to pay a £10 to get the catalogue and, and to walk around this enclosure. Uh, and if anyone wants to register the bids, they can do online and uh, they just need some form of ID if you're going to bid on anything. But I think I'll be interested. The auction is actually taking place uh, 12 o'clock Saturday and 12 o'clock Sunday, so it, yeah. or from 12 o'clock. It takes that long to get through this many lots. I, for one, will be quite interested in tracking the Land Rovers in particular. Um, be interested to hear in the comments if anyone wants to comment on what they think something's worth as we're walking around. Tell us, yeah. do you think that's a high high guide price, low guide price? Are you going to bid on anything? Um, you might want to keep your powder dry, as it were, and not tell us you're bidding. But just ask us any questions and uh, we'll see if we can answer it. It's obviously, uh, each car has got a, a short description in the window. Um, but also we, we can get underneath them, we can go inside, look under the bonnet. The bonnet's already popped on this Range Rover that we're going to start with. So, uh, yeah, we can get under the skin and see what they're all about. There's some really, really interesting stuff here, so I'm, I'm excited to have a look around. Definitely. I noticed there's a couple of ex-Royal Land Rovers here as well. Mm. You've got uh, King Charles' very own uh, Discovery 3. Yes, and uh, Royal Protection Range Rover L322. Yes. Very smart. I do believe. I, th I, th I quite like the Discovery 3. One thing I did think about the Discovery 3 was how much of a premium would you pay mm. to have an ex-Royal Land Rover? You know, we know the values of Discovery 3s unfortunately are probably at the lowest point. So that one is probably at the upper end of the market, but we'll have a look later we'll on. We'll have a proper look around that, yeah. It's and, an interesting uh, car. So it, yes, definitely. I think if it's good enough for King Charles, it's certainly good enough for <laughs> any of our followers on Facebook. Um, should we get started? Should we get started? Ten people watching, Ten people watching already. Hello. So uh, 
clock on in. It's only it's Friday lunchtime, and uh, let's see what we've got. So, and we'll start over here. I'll put the bonnet down for a second, but very, very nice Sahara dust, 1979 three-door Range Rover. This is a Suffolk G. Uh, looks amazing condition, to be fair. Body very straight. It's got the old uh, vinyl seats inside. Four-speed manual, the LT95 gearbox with overdrive, which is very nice. Nice feature to see on this car. Looks very, very nice indeed. Upper and lower tailgates free of corrosion, which is always nice to see on a Range Rover. And uh, the uh, venerable three and a half Rover V8 under the bonnet. Looks like a really nice jump in and go car, doesn't it, Steve? This is ready for the show circuit, ready for this summer. So you could be driving this. And I think actually, Martin, I've looked at the, it says it's a very competitive guide price in the window. And I actually agree, 12 to 15,000 guide price. I think it's really good value. Given what it can cost to restore one of these, I think that's excellent value. I do. Um, um, but we'll talk about the restoration aspect of this later. As we know, there are a number of specialists that you can buy all the parts from, uh, many of which advertise in Land River Monthly. Um, but this is a really, I think this would be a good buy. I think this will go over guide price, in yeah. my opinion. Anyone who's viewed this in person, I think, would be happy to pay what they've, what they've uh, estimated on this. I mean, it's even the headliners up. What are the chances? Absolutely. <laughs> and as you open the rear tailgate, the familiar smell of a 70s Range Rover just yes. engulfs the air in the we're standing. <laughs> Nostalgia. Very nice smell. indeed, yes. That's the first lot one. Number, That's lot number 195. 195. There we go there. Very yep. competitive guide price indeed. The, uh, the bit of paper in the window is not wrong. And period tax disc. That's quite a nice touch. Tax disc, last taxed in 1995. Some of our audience might not even know what that is. Because that's a tax disc. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> but anyway, moving on, I think we'll, we've got plenty of Range Rovers to look at. This is a, this 110 that it's representative of what lots of people are doing now yes, in indeed. this kind of colour co conversion with the, the, with the, the Kesit, comes, pastel green, pastel top, green, nice interior. This is actually a late entry, isn't it? So it's not in the catalogue, I believe. Uh, yes, but it is online. It's not in the printed right. catalogue, which is, uh, it fooled me. But uh, just having a look inside this, you've got your retro. I'll let you come past Alice and uh, have a look. But uh, this is this is one of those weekend vehicles. You take your kids out to the beach. You've got bench seats in the back with seat belts, and you can see the steering wheel in there, and everything's kind of like retro cool. But this is um, a beautiful bit of kit. Very nice. Yeah, actually, been, I think, uh... you know, if this was three years ago, the prices of these were absolutely through the roof. They have calmed, as have a lots of uh, classic The Covid generation. tax hit hard, didn't it, a few it years has, ago? And, but, uh, uh, this but this looks is something like... you can just jump in, it's clean. Um, 2009, so 2.4 TDCI, so you get six speed gearbox, quite refined as defenders go. Um, I would imagine, given the, the, the sort of build of the rest of the car, probably quite well sound deadened as well. Um, so a Did pleasant car to use at the weekend or every day. Until you get so. up to 70 miles an hour and the canvas starts flapping. Well, of course, Steve, that is the legal speed limit. You wouldn't <laughs> exceed that anyway. Absolutely not. Uh, estimate is 35 to 40,000 on this, which uh, given how much mark says low mileage, 36,000. Wow, that, that is, is low, low mileage. mileage. And I think we've seen them sell for this all, all day long. Mm. And uh, like I say, 35 to 40, is it high? Is it low? Is it realistic? Tell us in the comments. Anyone got any questions? Fire away. Um, Good honest could do with condition. A bit of Bit of, bit of dinner troll or something like that. The dinner troll guys are here, we know. Um, yes, we've seen indeed. them already. Um, future proof that for generations. That's a, that's a keeper. From a buying point of view, quite nice to see one with an untreated chassis because you know exactly what it's like to start with. Um, yes, definitely. And this obviously not done a lot of work. Tidy condition from what I've seen. We had a little look around earlier. Yeah. Jump yeah. in and go. Another really nice uh, Land Rover for, you know, we'll see, 35 to 40 grand. Interesting. Then we have the next one, lot 203. So another 2.4 TDCI county station wagon. I really like the look of this one. Steve. It is. This it's, is you know gorgeous. What? It, it, it is. Steel, I always like Ooh. a vehicle with steel wheels because another. I think it looks more authentic. You can change them. Another Royal Connection here, Steve. Aha. Uh -huh. Sandringham Estate, much like your own 90. Aha, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> 
I just think they get looked after. Now, I believe, now I don't know whether, whether it's the case for this one, but special vehicles look after all the royal vehicles and they get serviced like to death. So it's probably being had service every six months whether it needed it or not. A bit like uh, buying an ex-military. But this is a lovely, lovely example. This and is. I think realistically priced again, not, not far off the money. Potentially, I don't know. I mean, we can, it is an estimate at the end of the day. It all depends what people are going to, who wants to put their hand in their pocket, who's in, in the room, who's online. Interesting, it's no reserve. Yeah, that is So the guide is mildly a guide, you know, it's what it will sell for on the day. But uh, be interested to track this one. Another nice low mileage one, 41,725 miles on the clock. Uh, so again, fresh. Uh, and also for a TDCI, paintwork is fantastic. The, the later models did suffer a bit with bubbling here and there, but other than the windscreen blocks and a little bit under the, the seal here, I can't see, you know, any blistering, any electrolysis, any chips. It's, it's gorgeous and the paint, the color is spot on. Just notice the um, light deflectors. It's probably spent some time Potentially been abroad, yeah. Abroad, into Europe. yeah. Just to dip the headlights the other way. Obviously, but, we I'll, drive on the correct side of the road over in England. <laughs> um, I'm with you though. The steel wheels and this this metallic green is just beautiful. Quintessential Defender, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's the one that you'd want to look at and, and own, in it's, my opinion. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah. It, it, it's a bit of me. Who doesn't like a green Land Rover? Hey? Well, indeed. Very true. But Next. that said. Another soft top. <laughs> Another soft top. There's a lot to like about a soft top Land Rover, and this is a little bit more in your face than the green one. Uh, beautiful flat red colour. Looks a bit like Maasai, it's kind of orangey. Um, but interior has been completely retrimmed. Got wood rim steering wheel, nice leather retrim inside, front and back. And it's got the heavy duty galvanised hood sticks as well, so a bit more protection than the, uh, the, the standard sort of floppy thin tubes. We've got anodized door hinges, some little touches here and there. Wing vents have been upgraded, sawtooth wheels. Everyone likes a sawtooth wheel. Uh, some Cooper tires on it. Again, it, it definitely stands out. After. Just looking at the description, Martin, it actually says that uh, it spent a lifetime on a farm. It's just done just over 80,000 miles. Okay. And then it's recently been refurbished by uh, Global Land Rovers and it's called their Bondi edition. So, um, check them out I'm um, not familiar with them myself but just uh, look, yeah looking at the back here it's got a, a custom Land Rover badge which actually says Bondi 001 which I'm guessing is the name of the build um, so that's their first edition so they'll probably want to see how that, that does at auction I think well, got potentially a, it might be that the customers bought this and decided to let it go but some really nice touches on this got smoked LEDs all round smoked um, canvas you can just about see uh, three uh, triple seats in the back each side facing seats the smell of leather it's yeah, a nice lovely. nice another nice cruiser it and is yeah being a bit high mileage potentially won't reach the heady heights of some of the other defenders here but 20, 20 to 25, 25. It's, it's, but find me another 59 plate 110 <laughs> find another with 80 000 miles and do that to it will cost you more than 20 to 25. yeah led Realistically. headlights a yeah. bit of facelifting going on. It's got the aftermarket, probably excess grill package on it. Quite, but quite possibly, yeah. We'll see. DRLs. This is cool. This is sort of reminiscent, I think, of the uh, latest uh, Land Rover Trophy Two vehicles. Okay. Which look yeah. sort of a bit snow camo orientated. It's a sort of stormtrooper. A lot of people say it's almost a bit James Bond, isn't it? It's sort a bit of, yeah. You've got but it kind what of cool. looks like. Is it Santorini? Santorini and white combination, really nice winch bumper with a worn, what's it, is it Zeon? No, worn VR electric winch, fully caged. So it's been upgraded by live tuning, so we know it will go pretty well. Yeah. We know any, anyone that follows a live tuning will know that they can get really decent power figures out of TD5s, TDCIs. Um, they have a rolling road, so I should imagine it's putting out the best it could do 40 to 45 guide again building this from scratch from a, from a yeah, double cab it's not a cheap endeavor not, to put something cheap, like this together but it's but there you, ready for it ready for you money's been spent you've got challenger steel wheels with big bf goodrich all terrains on um just nice contrasting sort of colors going on recaro interior which is really smart and uh for any of our more vertically challenged viewers you've got what looked like lowered uh, tubular side steps there to make getting in and out a bit easier. 
So this will be perfect for Alice, who is behind the camera today, <laughs> to, to uh, be able to get <laughs> in. <laughs> so um, has anyone uh, joined us that wants to know what we're doing here? If anyone wants to know, we are at the NEC Practical Classics show, and we are looking around the classic car auctions, of which they have 34 vehicles in mm. the sale. And we're making our way around them now. Um, later on, we're going to get to the, uh, the collection over there, of which there are 17 Range Rovers of various uh, various conditions should yes, we say yes indeed um, this is exciting let's talk yeah. about this yeah go 60th Far anniversary away. svx hardtop probably the rarest variant of svx because everyone either wanted the station wagon or the soft top so this is very cool 25 to thirty thousand pound estimate there uh 2008 so another 2.4 tdci but i remember when i worked at the dealership we only got allocated two of these cars and they sold before we got them in they are, were so popular at the time and they remain collectible. So I think that's probably sensible. Got the, the graphics on the black with the 60 years embossed into them. And what do you think about the reserve, 25 to 30 on that one? What do you think? It's obviously not, it hasn't had like, it hasn't just been refreshed like some of the other defenders here. It has got signs of wear, but it is a limited edition. So I think that's probably not a million miles away from what it will go for. Um, it's been used. I, I don't know what the mileage is. What is the mileage? Yeah, it's, it's, it's 113, 420. Wow, okay. So they haven't, it hasn't been wrapped in cotton no, wool, has it? Well, you can see this is an, well, sound like a car dealer now when I say it's an honest looking vehicle, but it, it, it is. You can see it's been looked after, but it, you can see that it's, yeah, the odd scratch here and there, but actually. The important bits are still there. The alloy gear leaves yeah. are still there. It's obviously had. Uh, some extra switches put in for different things. I'm guessing it's probably got uh, or had aftermarket lights on it at some point. Um, wind deflectors, chunky tyres, the usual stuff. I mean, all importantly, it's still got the uh, proper SVX wheels on it, which is uh, quite nice to see. Are they diamond see. cut? I, I'm not really sure. No, look. But yeah. the, I remember when they first came out, people were falling over themselves to buy them, and we, you couldn't get hold of them. So really nice to see them still in place. It's really funny, isn't it, how like 15, 16 years of, since this was a limited edition, how fashions change and this is what everyone went for back, back then and, uh, and still do. Many of our audience, many of the people follow us and read Land Rover Monthly magazine will know about this vehicle, will probably want it. The, so um, get well, bidding, I would say. As well as the wheels, obviously, one of the most uh, obvious signs of an SVX is the, uh, the silver chunky grille and headlamp surrounds that make it stand out from a normal Defender uh, and the, it would have had a little sat nav in it from standard I don't know if that's still there but really nice car to be fair I really like that yeah yeah moving on another black 90s Let's carry on walking through not a special edition but critically 2016 model year so the last year of production for Defender already makes it you know pretty desirable very low mileage. Yeah, 11,695 miles. Bowler enhanced, so it's got bowler front bumper, I noticed. Uh, looks like this has got 60th anniversary wheels on it. Not sure if they're uh, could, could genuine. Well, they could, could be well be market. genuine. Yeah, Land Rover possibly thought we'll dress this one up, one of the last ones. Nice. Enter the old parts bin. Well, they wouldn't have had any trouble, potentially. No, no. Uh, steel front grille. Sport seats, uh, would you call them sports seats? Um, they're the high back, the so high you've back got the, uh, the seat back and headrest is all built into one, which is nice. They're far comfier than uh, standard Defender seats with the separate headrest. It's, you can tell it's low mileage, there's no wear on anything in here. The steering wheel is like perforated leather, looks like new. This is probably the closest you're going to get to a new old Defender. Um, yeah, 30, 35 to 40,000 on this one as a guide. Don't think it's unreasonable. Three years ago, this would have probably been what fifty. Oh, all the money. Fifty, sixty thousand. Yeah. But things have calmed down. It, it, it opens up the market for enthusiasts rather than just collectors. But jump in it, use it for the next 30, 40 years. Um, now we're getting to some earlier stuff now. So we've yes. done T, we've done TDCI, a two point four Puma engine. We're now at the trusty TDI three hundred TDI, the yes. engine that lots of people love um go on forever if that mileage is genuine at fifty-one thousand, that is a very that low is mileage. a rarity yeah, yeah low yeah. mileage low owner right hand drive <laughs> fresh from ski chalet duty which tells you that this probably ha has been looked after in its life very well 
quite a coveted, cherished vehicle. Paint looks immaculate. I don't know if, it, if it's had a respray or what, yeah, it probably has had a respray. Looking yeah, at the, quite uh, possibly. the rivets um, in the side. It, it's lovely, isn't it? It's tastefully done. The, the, it brings it up to modern day with the wheel and tire choice. Some general yeah, grabbers on there. Color coding. You've got a aftermarket KBX grill and headlamp surround set. And we can uh, have a look in if anyone wants general to have grabbers, a look in. Alloy wheels. It's a nice, nicely upgraded, a little bit more, you know, it actually, titled together. It actually smells like a new car in here. Really? It, it's something, that it's, it's like stuck in a time warp, amazing. The counter cloth still in place, nice to see. Yeah, yeah. Really, really lovely. Do you know the dangerous thing about us coming to an auction, Martin? What's that? We need a pay rise. So <laughs> if our bosses are watching, give us a pay rise so we can buy more land we buy That's all we use pieces. our money for. Now this, this is cool. Yeah, Every, you love a bit I of this. love a Series 3109, and this... Really, really good. It's a double cab. Who doesn't love a double cab? It's a double cab. <laughs> so, probably started off life as a station wagon. Someone's cut the roof down, put in probably a Defender rear panel, and made their very own Series 3109 double cab. And I think It almost this is cool. looks like the factory did it, doesn't it? That's yeah, how I well mean, it's, it's been executed, I would say. I like to have a look in them because oh, I'm even the door opens the nicely. I reckon this is a yes. Two and a half litre petrol. Now it says on the piece of paper here a rare factory built two and a half litre crew cab. I don't know if that refers to the fact it's a two and a half litre or the fact that it's a double cab crew cab now. It doesn't look to me. It's a. Uh, it does look like the factory have done it, to be fair. It it's does. nicely done. If you, Whoever's uh, done this, if it wasn't the factory. It's a really, really smart conversion. They've shortened the roof down. And as you can see, the finish, apart from this obviously being square and not round at the corner, is very, very smart. And the load bed doesn't look like it's done much, does it, Steve? No, and, and the interior is really lovely. The doors open really crisply. Just. I know this is you. This is a bit of you. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, everything. Is this so the car far. so far? Well, funny enough, this the, is the one for me. The one for me is the one next to it, the white green okay. GDI. Yeah. So far, but there's a lot more to look at. There's a lot more. Oh, and now we have ex-military. I'm just going to close the bonnet down on this bag. Air right? portable, lightweight. Um, my first Land Rover was a lightweight, and um, I was 18. And back then, wasn't that long ago, obviously. Um, wasn't the coolest thing to drive <laughs> but uh, they are so cool and this one fitted for radio nice Apple. to see it's still got his radio original. boxes on it i've got a series 3109 uh, that was fitted for radio long long ago and it's lost most of its stuff so this is quite nice to see radio boxes antenna boxes still got the uh, mid-mounted batteries between the front seats under a steel cover and uh, the mounts in the back for the radio equipment it's either, you know, I, I think this probably has been restored. I don't know what it, it says. It does on actually the, uh, say it's beautifully restored. And, you know, this, this looks better than it was when it was new. Yeah, you're it? right, yeah. Let's be honest. The, the, these had a fair, a lot of these had a hard life. Lots of squaddies with yard brushes yeah, painting absolutely. them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Driven, driven really, the really hard. And, um, but actually, yeah, a guide of 12 to 15,000, you couldn't buy a basket case, one of these, and restore it to this. Got That's the, really uh, realistic. I don't know what the, what the other viewers think. Will it be up? Will it be down? Is that a realistic guide price? Stick some comments in. Ask us questions. We're here for the next duration whilst we, we look around these vehicles. Still got the Pioneer tools in place. We've got the uh, the shovel and the pickaxe. Pickaxe handle and the pickaxe head on the tailgate here. The split tailgate, unique to the lightweight. With the shovel. Military uh, overrider. Uh, bumperettes still in place correct lights with yeah. the screw so, on uh, uh, the um, old uh, light lashing uh, points lashings. the screw on lens caps it all looks proper doesn't it it's a really nice job i think that i think these were used for actually hoisting them into the helicopters they tied tied up to oh, okay. the point. yeah I, I mean yeah it's uh do you know what i think our audience should do what's that? One, one of our people should buy this <laughs> and then drive it to our own show on the 18th and 19th of May at the yes. County Showground. So Land Rover Monthly Live, this will, this will potter around the arena beautifully yeah, it would. and for all to see. 
and uh, you know lots of classic Land Rovers to see there. Join in. Absolutely. Twelve to fifteen thousand. That's not a bad that price. Seems pretty reasonable for the, the standard of uh, the quality of restoration this has had um, and you know the completeness of it as well it's a really really nicely finished car yes yeah beautiful so and that is the end of the Land Rovers at this end of the thing unless anyone wants to look around a, an Austin 1100 don't know you're testing me now it's got an MG badge anyway we're going to head Austin over to the project M section Austin MG the same thing aren't they Steve I haven't got a clue anyway, I haven't got not, a Land Rover badge I'm not interested let's, let's carry on uh, let's carry on walking and Alice as we walk through show everybody else that this catalogue is full of other things as well so we know you know an eclectic mix of, uh, of vehicles to choose from. But all ages as well we've got everything from that's a 1920s car all the way up to Fiesta XR2i. This would have been like first car territory back in the 90s. Oh, it's an XR2 sorry that's a carved one not but, an XR2i. Uh, yeah but anyway lovely have you um, ever seen anything quite like the Mitsuoka Butte, which has got chandeliers on it? Personally, I never want to see interior. something like this again. It's not what a it, thing. It's not for me. Oh, it's not a view. It's a Lesade. Sorry, Lissade. I've got my Mitsuoka's mixed up. Anyway, but what a car! We, we're getting sidetracked by things that aren't Land Rover, so let's carry on. Ah, good point there, Alice. So any of the vehicles that are here, they actually have all of the paperwork for all of the lots. Anything that the owners of these vehicles has is in those files for your inspection. So um, anyone wants to join in on the catalogue online, www.classiccarauctions.co.uk. The catalogue is live on there. You can register to bid. You don't have to come down here. But actually, who doesn't love an auction in, in person? In fairness, I would come, if you were looking to bid on something, I'd come and have a look. And I'd also take in the rest of the show because it is yeah. amazing. Here. No, definitely. The show is quite large and uh, lots of suppliers here that can help with restorations and projects yeah, and things yeah. like that so well worth a day out talking of rest days yes go. let's go we're getting held up as you can see it's obviously getting rather busy in here now thank you uh, Friday is obviously the first day of the show and yes. uh, it's open tomorrow and Sunday so those who have joined us in the last few minutes the auction is live from midday tomorrow and midday Sunday. It takes them that long to get through all of these lots. So anyone coming to the show has ample opportunity to We've get registering to bid. Yes, the, before so, we get to the projects, there's a bit more royalty. Oh yes, I forgot, we digress. As you're the resident oh. Range Rover expert, let's right, talk for about a start, this. An L322 on a 13 plate, you don't see it. This is X Her Royal Harness, her Royal Highness, I beg your pardon, Queen Elizabeth II protection vehicle. Galway Glee, Galway, I can't speak, I'm too excited about this car. Galway Green, 4.4 TDV8 Westminster, the absolute top dog of this model year. The last of the L322s, if you were gonna buy one, it's the one to have, isn't it? The right color, the right interior, the right engine, arguably, if you're not into your five liter supercharged. Gorgeous. We can have a look in, actually. We can't. Well, we've not through this door. We can't. Ah, this oh, one this is one. locked. <laughs> we Probably the only one that's locked. We have access to most of them, but weirdly, it's got some light scratches. I wonder if uh, a bit of green laning has happened in this in this L322. We've got some light scratching in the paint up here and on the, the uh, D-pillar trims, but nothing that wouldn't be brought out with a good machine polish and a bit of love. But it is a beautiful bit of kit. I mean, really, they, these really are nice. really. I mean, without the Royal Connection, these are probably the best value at the luxury moment vehicle. l322 the values, are values quite low, aren't they? due to a number of things we all know what's happening with insurance at the moment but if you're going to buy one a late l322 is where my money would go regardless of how much i had to spend i love the shape that they drive amazing the interior is fantastic l322 yes it's a yes from me if tom barnard our resident uh markets expert who writes a column in in land of monthly yeah. so anything to do with buying guides he tends to write he would be all over this he would love this he, this is his thing um we should let him know because he should. might make a bid he can he can buy it we can live vicariously through tom exactly yeah but interestingly so the one that grabbed my attention earlier was the one next to it which yeah. is a discovery three we all know that uh, the values are them and this is an early 56 plate one we know the values are fairly 
No on Discovery 3s. However, this one is a bit different though, isn't this it? This one is different. Estimate of 20 to 30,000 on this because supplied new in 2007 for the sole use of King Charles, the Prince of Wales, and Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall, the current King and Queen. Amazing provenance on this car and the condition to back it up as well. I can't remember the last time I saw a Discovery 3 with an interior this immaculate. No, it it's actually lovely. I think we can have a look inside. Given as well, it's done nearly 120,000 miles. Just what a time capsule. It is a time capsule. How much of a premium do, does our audience think you should put on it for the Royal Connection? If this didn't have a Royal Connection? It's, I don't know, hard to say in this market. It is. Four or five grand. Yeah. Tops. Yeah. It's the high tax model. You'd have to pay the tax. But if you're buying a car with this provenance, I don't think you'd be too fussed about paying the extra money. Even the driver's seat looks in fantastic condition. Uh, quite rare as well. I, I would hazard a guess to see a dark coloured black interior with darker coloured, the Tonga green paint. Uh, they normally. Oh. It. If it's good enough for King Charles, it's good enough for me. Well. <laughs> but yes, lovely, lovely place to be. Anyone that's never driven a Discovery 3 or 4, these are fantastic cars. They are so, I mean, you'd struggle to get, a, considering what prices are doing now, you'd struggle to get a car that can do more for the amount of money it will cost you to get. Non-sunroof. Oh no, I lied, it's got twin sunroof. So uh, yeah, the less said about that, the better. Must be a HSE with the be twin sunroof. Beautiful, beautiful bit of kit, actually. And um, I think that is definitely one for the collector. I don't think it's going to end up on a school run anytime soon. No. Um, do the oil pump if you do buy it, just for peace. We know, that, we know they have bad press. Yeah. This would have been serviced with an inch of its life, though. Eh? Oh, it would I have would, been. In let's fact, make that assumption right now. In fact, there's a letter in the back from Land Rover yeah. documenting some of its time writing in connection with the new lease vehicle to be delivered to the Royal Garage. Wow. How cool is that? Fantastic prominence. Next up, another L322, this time an earlier car in the uh, quite unusual, but quite attractive, I think, Giveny Green, or Giveny Green, I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, not this sure. This one, 4.4 litre V8, which will be the BMW engine. It's an on an O2 plate. HSE, so a top specker. Really, really nice two-tone green interior, which I think suits the paint perfectly. In this light, though, it looks kind of grey, doesn't it? It's a very light green. It's a yeah, strange colour. Yeah, it is a strange colour. It color. suits the shape Lovely of the light. L322 yeah. really well. No estimate, sorry, no reserve, estimate four to six. 111,000 miles. What a... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can get them cheaper, but this will have... Because it's a petrol, it means it will have the better ZF gearbox, so you won't have any of the gearbox problems that plague the early diesels. I really, I think the amount this would have cost new, think what, how what much car this, you're uh, getting. This would have been over 70, wouldn't it? Easily. Yeah. I dare say, yeah, 70 to 80 grand. 70 to 80,000 pounds worth of car. It says it. to 6,000 pounds. Benefits from a reach, yeah, so it's had, it's all serviced, it's ready to go, and it's had a, a little bit of uh, cosmetic work to bring it back up. But what a lovely car, on the 18s as well, so <clears throat> it just looks classy. No tints. And, and these really, are making really it on the nice. show circuit now as well. We see these at our Land Rover events, don't we, throughout the year? The following that L322s they, are garnering now is fantastic. Yeah. They're really coming into their own. and uh, They tow well. They're a really yeah, lovely bus. a usable daily yeah. car. The glass headlights as well. When did you last see glass lenses on a car? Beautiful. Proper. Oh, VX number plate. You know what that means. X well, Land Rover. X Land Rover, there you go. So would, could that have been a press vehicle? Potentially. Probably, I'm not sure if it would have been pressed. Might have been on an O2. The really early ones were on a 51. But yeah, very, no, very nice car. Yeah, again, Tom Barnard, our resident marketplace expert, will be all oh, over this. Hang on, we're having some technical difficulties with the, uh, the gimbal. It's all right, just press. Are we still, oh. Oh. Oh, is it because the mic's cut off? Yeah, probably. Is it sorted out? Sorry about that. Just uh, you know, we say, we, we, like. we say sack the camera lady, but uh... <laughs> so this one, suffix D, 1977, restored. I like it. I knew you'd like this. Yeah. So uh, it says here, ready for its first real owner, which sort of said been reborn in a way, brand new again. This is uh, really, really nice condition. 
a few subtle upgrades. Got upgraded HT leads and what looks like an Edelbrock single carburetor rather than the twin SCUs, I believe it would have come on, or Strongbergs? I'm not sure on this model yet. Uh, probably Strongbergs. Um, Everyone converts to SGs. Will that make it ooh, use more or less fuel? Tubular manifolds as well, so it probably sounds heavenly to, yeah, to, uh, yeah, yeah. to boot. I wonder if that has a stainless steel exhaust then. A bit of a sports system. Why would you like that? The race style or Ross style? I say Ross style, some people say race style. But the wheels, lovely. Interesting fact about Ross style wheels, they're called that because the uh, guy who designed them, his initials were RO. So they were RO style, and now they've adopted the name Ross style, as we all know them that came on Range Rover Classic and early 90s. I didn't know that. Boring fact for you. That was. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Um, yes, interior, as you'd expect on a vehicle that's been restored. Very, very nice indeed. Some light wear on the vinyl seats, but again, you kind of, you know, the age of this car, you're, uh, you're gonna expect a few blemishes here and there. Get huge doors on the three door, don't you? Very long doors. Massive. And as you'll see as we wander up that way in a bit, it's quite <laughs> common to see a bit of play in the hinges, but this one is tight as a drum. Uh, the long gear stick in a Range Rover, there's nothing like driving an early two door. They just feel so regal and so. Yeah, very, very, very yeah. slow gearbox, aren't they? You drive and uh, who does It's not look? a vehicle you rush to drive no, because no, you're no. floating along in luxury. But uh, really, really nice. Tuscan blue. As well. That's the colour. I was yes. trying to remember yes. the colour. Yeah. And it's Tuscan blue. What a car. I what a load of um, you get a load of light, don't you, with the modern cars and the, the you know, modern cars and the, the, yeah. the If you want your bad boy tint to Range Rover Classic, it's not for you. No. You they're need almost a lot like a greenhouse, tint. just yeah, a greenhouse. Fantastic visibility. Yeah. That was one of the main things that sold them back in the day was how you know, what an amazing driving position, a commanding driving yeah, position yeah. you had. And actually if you park these next to the new Range Rover, these are actually tiny. Yeah, they are. But they, these were a big car many years ago, and uh, now they're not. Estimate 18 to 22 for what a fully restored two-door. I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, I, I do you think know what? So. We haven't actually said any of these are bad value yet, have we? It's because we love them all. Yeah, we do. But buy them all. we're getting into projects now, and some of them might be a little bit. We'll see. We love projects. So uh, without further ado, let's head this way. Before we get, we've got two more to look at before we oh, get to the projects. Oh, you know what? We're jumping the gun. Two more. Two more. This is an... Oh, we're overlapping. We don't want to get in anyone's way. But this has clearly had a light restoration. I would say, bugbear of mine. Sorry to whoever owns this. The cappings have been painted over. Please get upsetting. rid of the paint <laughs> on the cappings. Uh, it should be a criminal offence. It's got some chunky tyres. They look like inter-turbo special tracks on it. So you're definitely going to get that lovely hum as you drive along, <laughs> the ear-splitting sound of uh, an aggressive tyre. But actually, as a user... It's something for the weekend, it's something a cool car. to just float down. What looks like pub. fresh vinyl seating throughout. You've got yeah. fresh soft top on it. Uh, the paintwork has clearly been done. Barely any play in the steering. That's always a oh, plus. Oh, I'm loving this repair. Look at this little, little patch been riveted in there. To the, it's obviously got a case of farmer's wing going on here. Someone's done a... This has opened a couple of gates, hasn't it? A little fit. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? Oh, but do you know what? I quite like that. This character, isn't this it? This character. 12 to 15. I think that's a bit optimistic at the moment. Yeah, this is the first one I think is optimistic I'm not well. just saying that because uh, we've said we haven't been critical of the uh, prices, but, you know, it's a sort of... It's a difficult one. It's a nice car. But with any vehicles in auctions, auction houses have to manage um, sellers' expectations. They have to market it correctly to get people's interest. Guides, uh, estimates are there to encourage people, more than one person to bid, to make it work. Uh, interestingly though, one thing to consider is actually anyone buying one of these, there is a buyer's premium, as with any auction, and it is 12.5% plus the VAT on yeah. the hammer price. Yeah, so, so that needs to be factored into any bids that are made. Um, yeah, that isn't a TDI. Bargain. There's a, there's a distinct lack of TDI going on under here, which uh, you might hate, you might love. Very polarising thing at the moment. Electric converted, 90. Uh, 1988, EV conversion. I believe this was done by London Classic Cars, I think. Um, so it says fully electric, but retaining as many of the original features as possible. So it still feel like a 90. You just won't have that familiar diesel or petrol rattle from under the bonnet you'll be whisked along in silence um if you were living in in london and you wanted a classic land rover this would be 
Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, personally, I think looking at the tyres, I'd want to change those into turbo um, tyres. There'd be a, whilst you've got the peaceful nature of the end, the, the motor, then yeah, they're going to rumble, a bit of rumble on, off those. But so um, clean interior. The dash top's been stitched in leather. Uh, you've got all the uh, gauging for the electric system up there to the right of the steering wheel. You might be able to see through the window. It's a tidy little 90. It just depends whether you want electric or whether you're a bigger fan of the older fossil fuels. Hard to say. Each to their own. Each to their own. Right. right. right uh, Come on, let's go and look at projects. I'm excited. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Uh, They're over uh, there. Just talking through where we are again. So, so yes. Whilst we stood here, let's stand next to a Land Rover because no one wants to look at a VW bus. <laughs> well, I don't personally. We are at the NEC Classic Car Show uh, and Restoration Show. Um, we are in uh, Classic Car Auctions compound, of which there are a number of cars. Yeah. We haven't looked around the other cars here yet. We're here purely to show you Land Rovers and Range Rovers. There are 34 Land Rover and Range Rovers in the sale. We're looking around every single one. Um, the auction goes live from midday tomorrow and midday Sunday. You can bid online by registering your interest here or come down to the show, have a look round. And uh, I would personally want to look round a vehicle myself. Yeah. Um, one thing to note for those who have joined us since, all the paperwork for all of these vehicles is held in the office over there. So there's files on every vehicle. If you so see something you like, go and talk to the guys on the documentation stand and they'll show you through everything they have on each car. So you are buying it properly seen. Um, yeah, see, not here, you might not have seen in a picture. You know, I'm not slating anything. But there's a questionable bulkhead repair here. You yeah. might not have seen that in an auction picture. You come up here, you have a proper look around underneath, under the bonnet, in the, you know, in, check the interior out you know exactly what you're getting. So we've been coming to the show for many years and um, just looking around all the tray stands and all the various clubs, there's a club devoted to any of these vehicles. You can join, you can read Land River Monthly. Hundreds of suppliers here as well. You if you can, need any yeah. uh, bits, any tools, ideal. Yeah, it's all here. So you could even get a new wing for this. But uh, <laughs> come on, let's enough go, of let's that. Go let's go and have a look around some projects. This is the, the collection, I believe. Uh, all these Range Rovers are from the same collection. They're all in various states of repair. And, so uh, the collection is actually part of the Drayton collection. So an owner of these vehicles have been collecting Range Rovers for a number of years and have dropped them all into this auction. So uh, there is quite a few. Let's go and have a look. But who doesn't love a Jensen Interceptor? Pretty early, look at That's that. Got, that costs more because it's got barn dust on it. And this much, one's much. wrapped already. Not, not, in, uh, <laughs> not in wrapping paper, but some cling film. Unusual. We're closing in on our first Range Rover Classic. E-Type, Jags, Mark II. Forget about that. Oh. Look at this. Yes. Now Have I you think seen, I've seen this? a more 90s roof ornament than the... Uh, whale tail fin thing on the back there oh, yeah. what what a you know this is an unusual car to begin with but that is the cherry on the cake every time i see one of them it reminds me of the film crocodile dundee <laughs> when they took the one off the back and use it like a boomerang i've obviously misspoken earlier because i said if a range rover if you want a range rover classic you're not going to get a dark tint but this has the darkest tint of any i've ever seen in a range rover classic this is an out and out limo we can't get in the back we might better get in the front wow Oh, that's annoying. Can't get in. But uh, we might be able to get into the got, driver's side. Look at though. this. Look Discovery style stepped roof for extra room in the back. That's cool. Uh, it's obviously a stretch limo. I don't believe the centre panel opens. The rear doors do. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. The front is a soft dash, so you've got the updated dashboard, airbag steering wheel. It's been retrimmed in what looks like an oxblood coloured leather, which is really smart. It looks in really nice condition. Bit, bit of providence for you. Uh, just under 17,000 miles and uh, used to transport Mike Tyson in June 2000 to go. Hampton Park, Glasgow. If you're into your boxing, that could be the Range Rover for you. Period correct five spoke alloys as well. And the Brooklyn's bumpers, which are quite a nice touch. So again, you know, we're talking about um, estimates early. The, the estimate of this one is 30 wow. to 40. I think that is 
it's potentially to, quite high. Really take but the right person. The right person will want this. One man's forty thousand is another man's four oh, thousand. Yeah, so um, let's just have a quick look if we can if we can see in this one. No, this one is definitely locked. Bit, a bit of a cherry cherry sort of. Yes, red ox interior. blood, sort ox of blood, fancy yes. uh, red interior. Ox blood sounds better than cherry, cherry interior. From very shiny paint to not so shiny paint, our next one in line is a standard wheelbase. I believe this is a Vogue SE. Um, rest, this is a project, obviously. But, so, unlike a lot of other Range Rover Classic projects that you might come across, it's actually really complete. And uh, doesn't look like it would need a whole lot of work inside anyway to bring it back up to standard. They haven't knocked the barn dust off this, which means it's got barn fine this has on got, it. This has got some value still on it. Yeah, don't wash don't it. Wash it ever. Don't wash it. <laughs> we oh, all know, I'm have never to, wash this. I'm going to lie money. on the floor now and see exactly... Estimate 5 to 7 on this one. How crispy. So 5 to 7? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, you've got some welding to do. Inner and outer sills towards the back. See, I know Not you're keen good. on this one, Martin, because you've gone underneath it. No, I wanted to see how oh, okay. um, how okay. much it's gone to church. Upper tailgate. This has got an aluminium tailgate on it, so no need to worry about rust there. Actually, the lower tailgate's pretty good. A couple of little dents here and there, but not bad. I'm going to go underneath familiar, again. Um, footloose four x four number plate. So uh, based near Peterborough. Okay, it's not so bad at the back. The rear body cross member's good. The chassis looks good. Just the sills, so actually, probably not too bad, but then we don't know what the inner wings are like. This is why it's such a bonus to come down here and check these out yourself, because we're going to do our best to describe them to you, but you need to see them in person. If it was my money, I'd want to see it in person before I, uh, I put a bid in, but yeah, this definitely. is a nice car. It is, yeah, and I don't think it's um, 78,000 miles. Last no taxed in the uh, yeah two thousands and uh, twenty twelve five to seven thousand. I think it's all. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Nineteen ninety one. So usable everyday cars. The early nineties uh, Range Rovers are really sort of that sweet spot between simplicity and usability. You could drive this every day and it wouldn't phase anyone. I don't think. Um, we include a fair bit of Range Rover uh, content like this in the pages of Land Rover Monthly for those who follow us who don't read the magazine. Um, our main man, Alistair Kusick, drives oh, one yeah. uh, and he, ve various repairs get featured in our technical section, so boot floors, sill repairs. They were Re really recently popular. we've done some machinor yeah, panels the, have been the, included. Yeah, the specialists now that are coming through to yeah. look after these, you've got 2010 Machinor, Bishop's 4x4, Kingsley. Kingsley, if you really want to spend some money. There's so many different restorers and specialists in these cars. Famous Four are here as well, you can have a chat with them. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. So buy all the rare parts, parts people are starting you know, to remanufacture parts of these now. Yeah, new stuff what, all the time. YRM, do the inner wings if it needed wings. Um, did you want to have a look under this bonnet of this one? Probably a V8 of some flavour, I don't know if it's well, quite late enough this. to be a... Uh... Oh, it is a 3.9, okay. That's good. I thought it would be the uh, three and a half. It's actually a 3.9. It's got ABS, which can be a little bit troublesome, but there's, it's well documented now how to sort them out. EFI, obviously. Um, yeah, it looks all right. Automatic. It's complete. It just needs work. So any of our viewers interested in, in these kind of vehicles, tell us in the comments, ask us some questions. Far away, if you want us to look at anything specifically for you, we can do that while we're here. Um, we're going to be live for the next five or six minutes, I would say. Depends how excited Martin gets on the Range Rovers over yeah. here because some of the projects are getting more project-like as, yeah. as we head on through. I think Range Rovers are one of those where you buy the best you can afford. I've fallen into this trap with my last Range Rover. I bought it off a friend because I was offered it cheap and I had all the enthusiasm and the gusto to crack on and make it good again. But the more I looked, the worse it got. The more rotten it was, the more parts it needed, and I actually thought, I can't. That wasn't a particularly special example. I couldn't justify the time and the expenditure on it. If you come here and you see, you know, a potential project you'd be interested in, you really can crawl all over it, and you know exactly what you're getting from the outset. Because um, these can hide some serious issues, can't yeah. they? In terms of corrosion and the inner inner wings, 
it's yes, unfortunately not really anywhere these don't rust uh, no. structurally so whether these have been stored inside or outside i'm not really I sure think from they, pictures i've seen these have been indoors yeah that just implies that that one's certainly been indoors which dry stored for many many years maxi car show sticker a local show for us local show for us yeah it is yeah maybe from uh, nearby so these have got um i've just noticed uh, yeah let these two that we've just looked at five to seven thousand drives just under a hundred thousand miles on this one i really like this era is probably my favorite era of range rover because they're not they haven't got that that price premium of the two doors or the soft dashes yet but they have some really nice touches so You've got the four-spoke Defender-style steering wheel. You've got the older-style carpet, which I really like, the sort of sheepskin-type carpet. But again, these cars are going to be electronically fuel-injected. They're automatic. They're comfortable. You can use these every day. In fact, our classics editor, Gary Fusey, uses his classic every day. Um, I think that's probably the key to keeping these on the road, is using yeah, regularly. Yeah, they like to know. be used. Yeah. So they this deserve is a to be used. Range Rover geeky fact. The external door hinges uh, were deleted in the late 80s at some point, and you can see on that blue one there, that's got internal hinges, so you can't see the hinge. I quite like this. This is probably, like I say, my favourite era, and actually a great starting point, a great entry point into classic Range Rover ownership, because they have those cool quirks, but they're not, they're still usable. I mean, we've seen these fully restored, fetching significant sums yeah. of cash. And obviously, if you get in a professional restorer to do them, they have to make a living as well. And they are the experts. But these are the sort of things you can just take home and do yourself. Well, let's see if carry we can, on. I'll have a look under. I just want to have a quick look under the bonnet of this one. I would imagine this would be a three and a half bonnet. Oh, the bonnet catches stem. Okay, I think the bonnet catch is uh, a bit too rusty yeah so we'll abandon the uh, three and a half of the yeah, bonnet of this one and uh, <laughs> uh nice car five to seven we'll see yeah i'm gonna watch this auction tomorrow um we're here today uh, having a wander around so the auction saturday 12 sunday 12 not sure whether these are saturday or sunday in the auction but all the results of the sale of these will be published online on the classic car auctions website so yes. uh, be interesting have a best guess Stick it in the comments, ask us questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is another one that's clearly yeah. been stored in a barn. There's a bit of pigeon poop. There's a bit of dust. Last taxed in 2011 by the looks of it. But I really like the colour-coded three-spoke Vogue wheels on these. I think they look really smart. Uh, subtle pinstriping that you can just about see under all the dirt to break up the, this is the probably the Plymouth or... What's the other blue? I can't remember the other metallic blue. No, you've got me. I can't think. Caspian blue? One of those. Yeah. But it's a really yeah. nice colour when it's cleaned yeah, up. Yeah. Given the amount of dirt on this, doesn't look to have suffered too badly with lack of peel, which was a big issue on these. Uh, there's a bit of you know crispiness here and there, but tidied up, welded up, put through an MOT. A really nice classic user, really isn't it? Really nice thing. Yeah, no, definitely. And actually, the interior on this one looks gorgeous. Got the dark leather. All the uh, veneer is intact. What's the headliner like? A little bit saggy in places standard stuff for a Range Rover Classic. Fortunately there you can buy all the bits, can't you? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's specialists out there. There's you nothing you can't get really, is there? Do it yourself think? or someone will happily retrim your uh, headliner for you. Yeah, this is another one that needs some sill work, but... It's, it's almost really... a case of find me one that doesn't really. Is well, there, this certainly... Oh, actually, them. this has got box section sills on it, but just in board of that, there is... I'm not going to poke too much more at that, but... Again, it's a project, but something that you could turn around in your own time, you know, at your own pace. All the parts are available now. We haven't got to worry about stuff like that. No, popular vehicles. What's next? Ooh. Well, now this is cool. He's excited about Range Rovers, <laughs> isn't he? You know? this, is, this is cool. It's a Brooklyn, it's a 1992 Brooklyn's, Arden Green. It's got the bigger bumpers on it, which, dis which uh, are a distinctive feature of the Brooklyn's. Very hard to get hold of second hand so to find one with the bumpers and the side skirts intact is a massive bonus just buy this one then very simple as that five to seven thousand yeah. it's got some really really cool csa five spoke wheels on it as well which come up for sale very rarely i really like these i missed out on a set a few years ago and i really wish i bought them 
even though I've got nothing to do. That sounds to me, Martin. That it's <laughs> By the you wheels, like the get the Range Rover like, free. Yeah, yeah I don't know The wheels that. might only cost you £7,000. I've got no space, Steve, or <laughs> money. Time and money, or the time. biggest uh, the big three. issues. Yeah, <laughs> but again, it, you know, the interior. The, oh, this one's locked as well. The interior. It might be locked on the other side. For the right? age, yeah, it is unlocked that side. Um, they all seem to be really... I'm guessing whoever bought these was looking for specific um, <laughs> factors uh, and was happy to, you know, buy these and squirrel them away for, for someone in the future to save. And they've bought them well, by the looks of it, because they're, um, they're all complete and they're all pretty nice. The old headlining, you can guarantee one thing, is they, is they sag. They do, but they're easy to, easy to fix and cheap to fix. Under yeah. 100 quid if you do it yourself. Simple. Simple if you know how. Have you ever done a headlining before, Steve? No. <laughs> I would ask you to do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, if I bought this, would you restore it for me? Right. No. Okay, fair I'm enough. too busy doing all your other work. <laughs> <laughs> this has got my attention. I don't want to bypass this nice blue one because we'll come back down this road. Should we go along the back road? Yeah. This is a blue one. A blue one? It's okay. an LSE. This one. <laughs> mm. Do you know what that means, Steve? I think that is a 5.7 litre Chevy. V8. Yes, Chevy because if engine. you look at the front of this one, it says a name that's, a, you know, synonymous with fast Range Rovers. If I can pull the bonnet, oh, which is... Oh, under the bonnet. Let's have a look. If you know your Range Rovers, you know that on a car of this age, that's pretty special. Yeah. Or oh, I hope the bonnet release isn't stuck on this. Oh, no. It can't be. No. Fix it, Martin. We need to see it. <laughs> Hold that, Steve. This is getting serious. Hold my beer, he says. Right, we're going in. Oh, He's in. She's released. Yes. yes. You were correct, Steve. 5.7 litre Chevy small block with a single carb. I bet this thing is a rocket. Yes. And what a car. If You'd have to stop fairly frequently though. You would, yes. To fill her up. However, if you were going to choose one to restore and you had a bit of cash to burn, what a car. Eight to twelve thousand pounds estimate on That's this one. That's quite, yeah. Which is steep depending on how rusty it is, but... It will, I think this will need a fair bit of work. You, uh, it's hard to say. Shall I get underneath it? Yeah, go on. I'll Let's have a look still. then. The telltale sign to look at the Range Rover is probably where Martin you is know going what? right now. <laughs> it's pretty good. This one sill would benefit from grinding back and painting again, but actually it's solid on that side. Again, that's the tip of the iceberg. Um, as I said earlier, structurally, these rust everywhere. Rear cross member, rear arches, seat belt mounts, inner and outer sills, footwells, inner arches at the front, the bulkhead, body mounts everywhere. They like to rust, but this is mega. I really, really like this. So come on then, so far, what are you taking home? Out of the Range Rovers. Out of them all. Mm. The Series 3 double cab is still up there, but I... Mm, Really? I like this one. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's rare. Yeah, good. It's rare. Well, the reason I asked that question, because I know you're so excited about this, but I want to direct ourselves okay. to this, because All right. this is not, this is a bit of me, this one. You said so, earlier. So, so basically, we'll just get, they're in line, ready to be collected. <laughs> yeah. I'll go for this one, you go for that one. All right, yeah, you, if you're paying, yeah, we'll yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah. We'll just hire a trader quickly. So this one is a really, really nice, honest 1989 110, but this one's a bit special because where most of them had the old uh, two and a half turbo diesel, this one is a factory V8, which makes it so much better. Uh, the period correct county stripes are still in place. It obviously needs work. You know, the back tire's blown off, the B pillar's rusty, you can see. It's had a bit of a wee on the floor from the, uh, the hub There's seal. a little bit, of, uh, little bit of hub dribblage going on back there. And what I found really interesting is, um, a rodent has found it their home, so uh, it's had a bit of a chew up of the uh, bits of white plastic. If you want to have a look in here, just to show our viewers what what we're talking about. So yeah, someone's so had a little bit of a chew up in there. Uh, There's yes. a bit of a mouse house happening in here, but 
all the original county trim is still in place. Uh, it would clean up. It would absolutely be, be fine. I think this probably would be a body off restoration. Before you know it, you'd, you'd want to take the body off. We did have, I had a quick roll under this one earlier and actually the chassis looks pretty good, but you, you, you're you going to have some tidying to do. Yeah, um, but actually I think, Martin, um, the estimate of four to six thousand pounds, I think that's, it's a, good, I, um, I think that's a, a good starting point. Yeah, and actually everyone's got different ideas when it comes to restoration. Some people, they get a car road legal, they use it. That's all, they're happy with it. I think that's probably the route I would take with this because it is tidy. Uh, or you could go absolutely mad, strip it back down to a, a bare chassis and start again. Do, do what I do, take them to bits, start Leave to put it, it back together, and then years. abandon the project for three years. Yeah, you are quite good at that. <laughs> and just pray that Martin helps. Yeah. yeah. There's a reason I don't get any of my own projects done. <laughs> <laughs> right then, more so Range Rovers. I, I won't be buying any more yeah, today. Oh, don't. we need to, we're not skipping any, or should we skip that one? Should I'll, we go straight to that to you. one? This is quite different it's got color-coded wheels um, loads of lack appeal this is probably oh I like the interior though check out the retrim cream leather with red piping that's quite nice pretty special actually I think oh, once that's done and a color-coded dash yeah yeah, yeah no. how much is this one six to ten now I'm gonna put go out on a limb here and say I reckon that's quite optimistic uh, it's interesting however, some, some of the yeah, so it wouldn't pick it that hence the colour coordinated. So it's got a bit of provenance, it's got a reason to be worth more than say the other ones with the guides have up to. It probably is rare and unusual. And only sixty five thousand miles. So if you yeah. were going to restore one, you've got something worthy of rest restoration. The wooden picket does explain the, the like you say, the colour coded uh, the, the, the pipe leather, the uh, retrimmed D pillar cover, the retrimmed dash, the colour coded wheels. Restored this would be lovely. But anybody that, uh, if you're in the market for a restoration project, to screw all the way and crack on ready for next year's show circuit, here's the place to get one. There, there's 17 oh, yeah, of these There's here. something for everyone, isn't there? There is, there is. And, uh, if you points. really like two doors that need serious work, this bad boy could be for you. It's got the, uh, the uh, extra ventilation in the bonnet here. <laughs> I, spot, got, I spotted some more ventilation down here, which we'll show you in just a second. It's got uh, fully variable door hinges on this model with the A pillar that flexes all over the place. But look at it. Look how cool it is. Two tone, I believe that's Bahama Gold over a brown. Russet base. brown, essentially. Could be russet, yeah. Russet it was an old mini colour. Hasn't been cleaned at all, so it's exactly as it got pulled out of the barn. The old three-spoke steering wheel, overdrive in this one as well, four-speed manual, it'll be a V8. What but, a cool car. You know, I look at this though, Martin, and I say, you know, this is a proper commitment. You know, you're, you're going in a whole new depth oh, of yeah. you, disrepair with this one and versus, do you remember say, what, an 80s or 90s project. Yeah, I mean, this is parts are available for both, but you're going to be paying more for two-door stuff because there's less of it on the used market. Uh, remember what I said earlier about tailgates? Yeah, this is, absolutely. Uh, worth, yeah. worth noting when you look at any Range Rovers, actually, this is Upper not lower. unfamiliar. Tailgates, this one is like, I'm not even going to touch that because I don't want bits to fall off. But if you wound the clock back 20 years ago, this would have either been bobtailed yeah. or made into a pickup and off-roaded, you know? And lessons should be learned, really, because people have started doing that with early discovery. Well, the and discoveries coming they're in. They're starting to realise actually that the stuff that is. The discovery is actually. There's, there's no discoveries in the auction, which I'm sad about because I love a discovery. But or, or any, or, or any uh, freelanders, early freelanders. No, no freelanders. Unusual actually to have that. But this one has survived the bobtailing uh, treatment, but it has got bigger. It's got 750, I believe they're uh, super SATs, which were really Fire popular. Stone, Firestone, Firestone Sats, Sats, yeah. yeah. Uh, Make a means, nice rumble down the road these days. Yeah, hilarious in the wet as well. <laughs> the rear arches have been cut to accommodate them and the front wings have been trimmed, so there's that to account for. But again, if you're getting into something like this, you know that you're going to be going, you know, from the ground up. And I do like the sticker on the back. It's got a, a sticker on the back window here that says Rover Rescue, which is exactly what this two-door needs. <laughs> it does need a so, so anyone that our, our viewers want to rescue this, I think the estimate of this one... I, I, I question that. I can't that. remember. It's 
Oh, she's had some... Seven to 10,000. She's had the tin opener tr treatment on this side. The, something's caught this hinge and ripped all the door open. Yeah. Don't underestimate the price of a good two-door door. However, in the latest issue of LRM, we've got a guide, a workshop guide, on how to restore two-door doors from rotten condition. Fantastic. Because you can now get the skins, you can take that and fix it yourself at home. Right, so you've got your door sorted, just need the rest of just it. Just the rest of it. And right. uh, yeah, it's to, to me, for, for personally, that's too much of a commitment. But it there depends. are people out there with yeah. a lot more skill than I've got when it comes to knowing that that's worth doing. It definitely is worth doing. Um, There's a fire engine over here. Let's go and have a look at these. Let's look because at we're coming to the end now. So um, The final two. The final two. It's still got the water pump. You can't really miss the water pump on the front for the uh, for the hoses, the fire appliance. This is a Takar. You'd be pleased to know Ooh, this is, is not in service, okay? For any fires. Yeah, just in case you were confused. This is not in service. <laughs> Six wheel car, Michael. Have you ever seen one of these corner with a full tank of fuel? I've seen pictures. Oh. Full tank of water. But, for, <laughs> yeah, but very rarely will it have yeah, a full, full, tank, of full tank of fuel. It's probably guzzled half of it, trying to sound squat. So you've got the, the standard front seating the water cannon pipe work goes right up through the cab up to the roof we'll get alice to to get a little yeah have a, have a little that. peek in there so it's really interesting but anyone that's ex ex fire servicemen could these buy this were, and i believe some of these are still used on some airfields in the uk yeah, uh, yeah. roll the shutter door brilliant overlander could you imagine if you over put one of these together as a camper oh, fantastic. think of the storage oh, yeah coming out there yeah, you could do all sorts with the back body this size. Really, Almost really a cool. shame to take it to pieces, leave it as it is, take it to the show. Do you know what? Any of these cars, thing. if you bought one of these and sat it somewhere uh, where people could see it, they'd instantly want to talk about it. They're such yeah. great talking points, regardless of what you do. Um, fantastic cars. And, yeah, just, uh, I don't know if all the fire equipment is with this one. Certainly, it looks like most of it is. Um, and yeah, and these were only four wheel drive, I believe. The six wheels were simply to carry the weight to of the water. To carry the weight, yes. Um, but you'd have a lot of fun cornering with a full tank of water because they are hilarious. Yeah, it's got the, the third axle, the diff is just blanked off. It's blanked so. off. So, anyone that's joining us now or, or joining us late, we've just walked around. You can, I think you'll better watch this video after yeah, you've you'll gone. Be able to watch it back. If we haven't bored you to death already, but there are 34 vehicles we've just been round, and it is the classic car auction at the NEC. Uh, auction is live tomorrow from midday yeah. uh, and midday on Sunday. Uh, if you want to bid online, you can. You just register by visiting the classiccarauctions.co.uk. Uh, register. <laughs> Uh, any of the sale, the hammer prices of these are subject to a 12.5% plus VAT bias premium. So that needs to be factored into anything you do. But um, all I'd say is get bidding, get restoring, get reading land yeah. monthly, come to our shows. Um, if you check out www.landrivermonthly.co.uk, we have a number of 4x4 spares days. So the old sort outs at Newbury, at Malvern, at Ripon, Rutland, throughout the year. So anyone that's looking for elusive parts, come to our spares days, they're on a Sunday, throughout the year. So check them out online. Um, that's pretty much us, isn't it? We do this last one. Yeah, yeah, let's do the last one. You do that, and uh, yeah. Quite a cool car, this, because it's a Monteverdi, and Monteverdi were responsible for taking two-door Range Rovers and even before Land Rover decided to make them have four doors Monteverdi went do you know it would be better than two doors four doors so they did it themselves I'm not entirely sure this is one of those early examples it's an 82 model so probably um, wasn't one of the first you know conversion cars but still very cool to have the Monteverdi badge on it has got the early front seats and it's got covers on the back oh the doors open we can have a look this is typical of what I was talking about earlier. The seat belt mounts, just, you know, rear arches. I believe this actually could be a proper Monteverdi because the striker is different. Oh, not going to touch that again. Is that another <laughs> one of your uh, interesting facts? Well, you, yeah. you've seen what a door pin looks like on a four-door classic. It's a, a single piece, whereas this has got a, a U-shape um, horseshoe, if you like. 
You see, some, something that is worth noting, and we, 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 uh, we spoke about this earlier, is having a look in person is so much better. You yeah. can see that there's been a little friend, a little friend in there as, as well, a um, bit of chewed up um, plastic bag or something like that. Um, but just have a look round. With any auction, I think it's... Uh, there's nothing better than seeing him. Oh, we missed that one. We can't. We did miss... we do that one? Go on, Last then. one. Go on. Okay. All right, this, I he like this. He loves a Range Rover, Martin. Range Rover. He loves this it. Is, again, an external door hinge. I don't know if... No, this is another Monteverdi. At first, I thought it was a Vogue, uh, Vogue Special Edition because of the colour. It isn't. External door hinges, vertical slat grill, which looks so cool on a four-door Range Rover. As you can see, it's got the metal grill with the ah, vertical yes. slats. Twin fans as well. Period correct uh, bull bar on the front here. Again, if you want a Range Rover Classic that's a bit special, you're going to be paying a bit more than your standard rusty four-door. Yeah, hence the guide seven to ten rather than six to seven on some of the other But if stuff. you're going to do something, if you're going to, it's going to be the same... Same workload. Same amount of rust to fix. It's the same weld burns, whether you're doing that <laughs> yeah. one you'll, or you'll the other one. Set the same amount of hoodie or hoodies on fire, whether you're welding a Monteverdi or a standard four-door. So if you're going to go to the trouble, it might as well be a special car, and there's plenty to choose from here. The Range Rovers are like... Oh, there, there, there's loads here. What um, a selection. Yeah. Unlikely to see another selection of Range Rovers like this come up, I would say. So the Drayton collection is obviously very, very special to have them all in one place. Yeah. And even if you don't want to bid on one, just to come and pay have a, a tenner, look. grab a catalogue. You get a nice catalogue. Come and have a look round. Access what other Monitor people the prices because you'll learn a lot from the sale prices of these. That actually, if you've got something like this in your own barn at home yeah. and you're thinking, what will mine be worth? This weekend coming is probably a true reflection of the actual values that people are paying today. I'll be watching it. Yeah. Without Will you be doubt. bidding? No, I can't no. afford any more projects. <laughs> I can't afford a divorce. With that, I think we will leave it. So, fire away with any questions. You can comment on any of our posts. Yep. And uh, over the next few days, we will reply to some of the messages. Indeed. Cool. Thanks for watching. See Bye you for soon. Now.